Hey guys, this is a quick video about the initial tooling purchase that I made with my G0704. This is not every single thing that I bought, but the things that I would suggest you consider buying. You don't necessarily need to get the brands I bought, but this is just kind of an overview of what types of tools, tooling, and accessories will help you with your milling. First off, this is a 12 by 18, 3 inch thick granite surface plate. I think this is a grade B. And uh, this is not totally critical, but it is handy for inspection and, uh, you know, lapping parts into flatness. Um, you, you're probably not going to use one of these every day, but I wanted to get one, <clears throat> so I budgeted for it in the, in the very beginning. One thing I do think you're definitely going to need is a good clamping kit, and this one came from Shars. This is a 3 8 by 16 half inch, and the half inch is the uh, width of the T-slots. And I haven't used this yet, but I've tested it out and the T-slots fit in the table very snugly. So this is definitely the size. If you're not going to be using a, a vise right away, get this and you'll be able to clamp your work right down to the table. If you are going to use a vise, take a look at my glass urn video about the 5-inch standard. Uh, and there's some good comments in the comment section about alternative vices that you can use that are similar or uh, reasonably similar quality. But if you're going to use a vise, you're also going to need a set of parallels. I don't think there's one time where I've used my vise and I, I, and I wasn't also using parallels. So definitely budget for those. Uh, this one came from Shars, and uh, I've had pretty good, uh, pretty good success with it so far. As far as cutting goes, uh, you're going to need a good face mill. And this is a Shars 45 degree. And uh, this is a 2-inch face mill, and it's been phenomenal. I've, I've done full 2-inch facing on aluminum and steel and had really good results. Uh, the only regret that I have is because this is an integral R8 uh, collet or uh, R8 arbor, I'm never going to be able to use it with any other arbor system. And so I'm kind of stuck with this. Eventually I may buy a different end mill or face mill just so I can use it with the Tormach uh, style of tooling. This is a Tormach uh, R8 collet that you can use for their tooling. And uh, this is pretty cheap. And this will allow you to use three quarter inch straight shank um, tool holders. So, for instance, this boring bar came from Shars, and um, because it's undercut right here, I actually didn't need to get the, the uh, Tormach conversion ring. And that looks like this right here. Um, you can see it's been epoxied on, and this ring gives you a nice square shoulder uh, to index onto. If there's a radius down at the bottom of your tool, then you have to get this ring. Anyway, the boring bar and the uh, arbor came separately. And uh, this was actually really, really long. I got it from Shars. Uh, both parts came from Shars. So I actually uh, cut this down with a Sawzall and then put it in my lathe and chewed up the end and uh, put a chamfer on it. And it works perfectly. I've had, I've had really good luck with this. Um, as far as the boring uh, bars themselves, the cutting uh, tools, these are, this is just a cheap uh, set of cheap half-inch tools I got off eBay. Uh, you can pick these up anywhere. And I actually hate these. But uh, they do get the job done. Some of them, the uh, brazed bit is brazed on at the wrong angle and makes it almost useless. So, um, you know, buyer beware, I guess. Now, as far as a collet holder, um, this is ER32, and I, I don't remember where this came from, uh, but I like it, and so I'll, I'll give you the link. And then, um, as far as the collets, the uh, I bought a half inch, a three eighths, and a quarter inch. Although I had, and I bought end mills for all those as well. But really, I've only been using these two end mills. This is a, a half-inch, two-flute, high-speed still. It was about 10 bucks from Shars, and it's been great on aluminum. Uh, I don't think it's done too much in steel other than just to test it out, but so far I've been quite pleased with that one. And then this one, this is actually the one I use the most. This is a quarter-inch, four-flute, solid carbide, and Shars sells this as the USA. Uh, so who knows where it comes from, but this thing cuts like crazy, and I can cut steel and aluminum with this all day. And this thing's taken a ton of abuse and is still going strong. Um, when it comes to cutting tools, my philosophy is when you're new, buy cheap so you're not destroying expensive uh, tooling. Unless you can afford it, then by all means. Um, my reason is I figure there's three, um, there's three reasons why you would buy really high-end expensive uh, tooling. The first is that you need something done absolutely as fast as possible. The second is you need something to have the absolute best finish right off the machine. And the third is that you need absolute best, uh, the best tool longevity. And if you need all three of those, then you should be buying the expensive, nice uh, USA made or whatever, um, you know, carbide, um, I, you know, whatever it is you're buying, end mills in this case. 
If you're willing to sacrifice, you know, spending extra time or not getting the best finish and then finishing it some other way, not right off the machine, or tool longevity is not a big concern because you know you're going to be breaking your tools anyway, then I would go ahead and just spring for the cheap stuff um, as a beginner. And then, you know, once you've become confident and time becomes a, a factor and you're interested in getting stuff done right the first time every time, then yeah, start buying that more expensive stuff. As far as uh, drill chucks go, this is the included one, and I use this, actually I've been using this exclusively, and it does have some run out, but it's actually been pretty good. Uh, half inch, um, it'll take up to a half inch shank, and uh, my other idea was to try to use my nice MT3 tapered glassern chuck, uh, and so I actually bought an adapter, this is R8 to MT3. Uh, the problem is it's so long that there's not enough head travel on the mill for me to be able to use this. If I were using some kind of really, really stubby drill bits, uh, I guess it would work. So this was only like $10, and I don't feel bad that it didn't work, but uh, I would recommend not going that route. If you're going to buy a high-end uh, drill chuck, then um, you know get one without an arbor that you can, so you can choose the arbor, or get one that has the arbor of your choice, R8, or if you decide to go Tormach, then you know go that route. You're also going to need some indicators. This is one that came with a magnetic base uh, from Shars that I bought for my lathe. And this has actually worked really well um, up until I dropped it last week. And you can see now that it sticks. And I know the shaft isn't bent, which means something internally has gone bad. So I'm kind of torn. You know, maybe a more high-quality one would have survived a drop. It was probably about a three-foot drop onto concrete. Uh, but if I had broken a more expensive one, I'd be even more depressed. So uh, I think the cheapos are fine. I haven't had, really had any problems with these. Um, I'm, you know, I'm not necessarily trying to get things down to a thousandth of an inch every time or, or less. So, uh, it, it's been pretty good. Get the magnetic base uh, version and that's what I'm going to link. And then this is a dial test indicator. It, it reads down to a tenths of thousandths. And this has been pretty good too. I've been using this mostly on my lathe to indicate parts, uh, you know, right into zero when using a four jaw chuck, but it has also come in handy on the mill. So that's something to consider. Uh, this is a Harbor Freight 8 inch digital caliper and I had a blue one of these that you may have seen in my other videos but it broke a couple of weeks ago. Uh, this These screws backed out and the strap fell off allowing this retaining uh, plate to fall off and then one day when I was being careless the whole thing just slid apart and the guts fell out so I threw it away. So this is another Home Depot or I'm sorry Harbor Freight one and uh, I've had good luck with the other Harbor Freight so that's why I went back to Harbor Freight and bought this one and it gets pretty good reviews online. Uh, I think for beginners this is adequate. Uh, if you're concerned about um, drilling or drill bits, uh, honestly, I buy mine wherever I can get them. You know, here's here's a rigid, you know, this came from Lowe's. Uh, this is a, a solid carbide one that came from a hardware store down the road. Not solid carbide. This they claim this was solid cobalt. Uh, I would take a look at this um, Harbor Freight uh, Silver and Deming set. This goes from nine sixteenths up to an inch by sixteenths. I've had this set for several years now, I think about seven or eight years, and it has taken a ton of abuse. And it doesn't make the prettiest holes, but it does make holes. And I've actually drilled, I have, uh, I've drilled through a piece of one inch thick plate um, stepping up until I got to this one inch hole and drilled a one inch hole through one inch steel. And uh, yeah, it chattered and it was kind of a nightmare, but it does get the job done. So if you're looking for cheap drill bits, I don't think you can go too wrong with these. And if you need the precision, you know, after you drill your ugly hole, leave yourself a little bit of room and use your boring bar to chew that hole up and get the location right where you want it and get a nice, you know, a cylindrical uh, surface. Um, I also bought some tap holders. Uh, these are cheap and they came in a three pack. And uh, I get my taps locally from a Fastenal dealer. We have a Fastenal a distributor near where I live and they have a storefront. So I'm able to get these at a pretty dang good discount. Uh, but, you know, some kind of tap holder for tapping holes. You know, eventually I'd like to get one of those fancy holders that the mill holds itself to do my tapping. But for now, manual tapping is good enough for me. Uh, all right. Well, I'm looking around and I think that is everything I wanted to discuss. So if you have any questions or comments, uh, don't forget to post them below. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. If you would like to see other things, don't hesitate to ask. The whole reason I made this video was because uh, I got a couple comments on my other videos where people were asking to see more about tooling. So uh, I'm always willing to do follow-up videos or videos on specific topics if you'd like. And uh, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching, guys.